So like just getting back into the overall kind of view of the going into the summer, like is it is it just the same? <clears throat> what teams obviously obviously you're gonna have the Kerrys, you're gonna have the Dublins, and you you're talking our man there for the dark horses. Who else are you talking? Who who else kinda do you take takes your friends? I don't think Derry. I don't think Derry have gone away either. Um I think Derry are still about. Um, you know, I like the fact what Gallagher what Rory Gallagher does is he's a very tight knit squad. He doesn't carry big numbers in his squad. He keeps it very confined. So all those guys this year are in the year three of Rory's process. Okay. And now I know that he's, he, he's put them through a very, very grueling physical regime over the last number of years. I watched them in the McKenna Cup in Newry and the, against Down. They were, they were probably, they probably hadn't got enough, enough work done at that stage physically. And they probably had half a team playing. But they were so well versed in what they were doing, and uh, from their kickout strategy to their defensive plan, you know, to the way they broke down, down, and and like that day, down got three goals against them, which is obscure for for a Rory Gallagher team to concede three goals. But it was the way they created their scoring opportunities. That's one big thing that I think and uh, has evolved in Rory's coaching as well is the offensive side of things. You know, he's really, really brought an offensive element to his game that many people under Donegal, Rory Gallagher under Donegal, Rory Gallagher under Fermanagh. But he's probably cut this cloth to suit. He was carrying on the legacy of Jim with Donegal, which was an ultra defensive system. With Fermanagh, he was probably he was probably looking at you know with Fermanagh he was probably looking at a team with with very few scoring options at that time. So therefore, he had to play a very very rigid defensive system. But with Derry, he's got good forwards. He's got good forwards. He's got forwards with pace, power, penetration. You know, and he's got those Glen lads coming back in, Ethan Doherty, you know, Connor Glass, you know, Danny Tallon. Those lads are coming in full of confidence, like, you know, full of confidence. So it'll be very, very interesting to see how Derry perform this year. Uh, do you think even, I know last year, obviously, when you get into Croker, like, they still, they, uh, to me, Derry still played the counter attacking game. I know they have McGregor inside, he's a very, very good forward, but like, to reach that kind of next, next level, um, personally, I don't think you can you can win an Ireland and playing playing a running game as in the counter track football. That's only my yeah. personal opinion. You might you might be different to me now, but to me, Derry last year they still have to evolve that that side of the game in terms of the way. They, they, like to me, they run the ball probably I'd say seventy percent of the time, eighty percent of the time. W- would you would you disagree with me? I would not disagree with you at all, and no, listen, I, com- I think you're completely right. I think, and it's like anything, I suppose, you know, it's like life, you know, it's like it's like life. I know we're talking about, you know, uh, diets and people having too many pints at the weekend. No matter what you do in life, it's about the balance, you know, and I think football's exactly the same. It's about getting that balance between, as you say, the hard-running game and the kicking game, because the hard-running game physically is a very difficult game to sustain. It's a very difficult game to s- sustain. I don't think we can just go out all, all out, like right, we're going to kick the ball flat out, blah blah blah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. there is an element of, of mixing it up. Like Kerry last year had a nice balance. You know they took a couple of yeah. brilliant marks in the All Ireland final, yeah, and 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 they still ran the ball really effectively as well. Because Kerry obviously, you know, especially with the with, with the deep line runners that they have in their half back line and their full back line, you know, have serious serious penetration as well. And I think you're completely right what you say. Maybe just having, you know, just another string to their bow. But look, I'll tell you one thing, Enda. You see Shane McGuigan, I am telling you this now, he is a fabulous footballer. I was actually at the McKenna Cup game myself and Benny Coulter was standing watching it on the terrace. Like, and we were just like saying how good a footballer he is. Like, we always knew he was a good player. Do you know what I mean? But you're just sitting there, middle of January, you know, McKenna Cup, heavy pitch, down really up for it, big crowd in Hurry, and he was just a class above anything on the pitch. And that's the truth. And I just watched him again, Limerick there at the weekend, the ease in which he was getting his scores. And, uh, you know, and I listened to John Devilly actually was down in our school there a few weeks ago and uh, doing a coach education workshop. And John talked about the amount of preparation Galway put into that game. But the yeah. amount of detail they went to on, particularly on McGuigan, the amount of detail they went into, even going back as far as his Sigurds and Cup days, like that's serious, serious uh, level of, of of preparation and detail in the in the marking a player, you know. So, so I I think when, when they've got a marquee man like that, because Anna, I'm gonna throw something at you here. Um, we had this conversation uh, at the weekend there with a couple of friends of mine. We're having a few beers last Friday and we're talking about this, and we're chatting about football in general. And this might be a statement that might cause a stir or whatever. Well, you take the Clifford, you take Clifford and Shawnee O'Shea out of Kerry, right? Yeah. And see right across the board. See right across the board. 
I don't think there's an awful lot between the top eight or nine teams. And I mean that. If you take those two boys out, because they're the stardust. They are the stardust. I think Dublin have definitely regressed from where they were. You know, Mayo are in transition. <laughs> you know, Galway are still, you know, Galway are still Galway. They're still beatable. Tyrone are a wee bit on the dip. You know, Armagh, okay, they're on the rise, but they're still not, you know, world beaters. And I just think if you take Clifford and Shawnee O'Shea to carry, there is not a massive amount between the rest of those teams. And uh, nah, that's that's just the way I see it. You know? The, no, I, I don't, to be honest, uh, Stephen, yeah. I, uh, even with them, I don't think there's, there's an awful lot between the teams. I think uh, compared to five, six years ago, I think the football championship is in a much better place in terms of competition. I think there's, as you said, we've gone through seven or eight teams here and you wouldn't, we, the two of us wouldn't be surprised if uh, any of the eight teams got to an on-on final. And you couldn't, you couldn't yeah. say that six, six, seven years ago, which is, which is great to see. Like you, you nearly, I nearly fell out of love with the game six, seven years ago. It was, it was that bloody. I know, obviously, maybe yeah. we're getting turned on the finals, but in terms of watching Leinster football or watching quarterfinals, yeah. sure, it was absolutely desperate stuff in terms of yeah. the hammerings, the beatings they used to get. It, but now, as you said, the Armas have come into play. I know I've been harsh, not harsh, but with Rory and De- uh, with Derry, but as you said, where Rory have gotten Derry from where they were, it's very, very impressive. But as you know, once you get to a stage, you get greedy and you want to go again. Like So that's that's my question there in terms of Derry. Like, well, how are they going to break that ceiling to get to the next level? So like, it's like, Ulster football have de- has definitely uh, co- come on in terms of co- competing for the Ireland's now. And even even like, it's good to see Goy back in the top table. Obviously, Mayo, I know you're saying Mayo is in transition, but they still got to an all final two years ago. So like, next day has come in to set up there now. And it's from a lot of James's hard, you know, James's hard work in terms of, uh, blood in that team in terms of the, the team of you know six years ago is completely gone now. So yeah. next day is kind of come in and there's a lot of lot of young blood there that that's been blooded already. So it'll be interesting how they go. So and as you said, Russ Common as well. So it's it's look at the only team, the only team that I'm still desperately disappointed with is is Cork. I I fucking for a size yeah. the county their size it's absolutely desperate. Now, hopefully Mead, I hope Mead get back to the top table as well. I hope O'Rourke comes in and uh, does a bit with them. But for whoever is fucking under the, uh, over the structure of Cork for the last 10 years should be ran out of the county. I just it's, do not understand. It's it. astonishing. It's astonishing, and I have no, like, we, I have this conversation so many times with people, like, it's, it's a massive, massive county. Massive county. Huge football. But what they have ended as well is what a lot of other counties are crying out for, including my own county. They have some serious physicality and some serious size in their team as well. You know, some proper, yeah. proper athletes, like, you know, and that that's something that always sort of baffles me. And I thought Kevin Watts coming in there this year. Now, saying that, it's only one game in. They have yeah. Kildare this year. You know, Kildare and Cork probably over the last number of years have been very, very similar in that they have flattered to deceive. You know, they've always struggled defensively when they've come up against certain teams. They've always sort of crumbled when the, when, when, when the, when the, when the button's been pressed. But... Just going back to Division 1 quickly before we talk about Cork. Three Connacht teams, Galway, Mayo, yeah. Roscommon, yeah. and four yeah. Munster teams, Armagh, Donegal, Tyrone and Monaghan, and one yeah. Munster team. No one from Leinster, which is, yeah. which is, which is, which is astonishing, you know. And, and it's, it's, I, think that's an, I think that's an indictment. And uh, I think that's an indictment of where the football's going. I don't think Dublin are strong. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity for, for Kildare and me this year. A really good opportunity for either of those two teams to kick on. I thought Longford would have really pushed on. I thought they would have definitely pushed on. Uh, they're always there for a scalp. But I, I just I was worried about that result at the weekend. And then Westmead, I think Westmead last year, you know, the respect that those lads have. I seen Jack Cooney in action before Christmas in Jordanstown at the Ulster GA coaching conference. He was delivering a session of transition play. And I can tell you what, he, he blew me away with how good a coach he is. And a, and I have a funny feeling that the Westmeath players, you know, just they might have just tipped the pinnacle there last year by winning the Talshin. And I just feel there might be a wee bit of a plateau there this year under Desi Dolan, you know. It's Desi's first year managing well. It takes a while. It's very easy to sit in a commentary box. It's not as easy to sit in a dugout, you know. And that's the thing them boys have got to remember. It's a tougher gig on the dugout than it is in the commentary box, you know. If he came in, if Desi came in and kind of, I'm not going to say stabilise it, but as in just their league position, a decent championship, maybe a win or two, do you know what I mean? As you said, uh, 
they're building nicely, as in from the Italian Cup, if they could just, I'm going to say, stabilize for a year or two and then hopefully kick on again, do you know, do you know sort of way? Well, I, I think I'm, I think you need out of Division 3. You know, that like I'm looking at Division 3, you know, awfully Fermanagh, Westmeath, Longford, Antrim Down, Cavan Tip. Like Down and Cavan have aspirations to get out of three. The the result Westmeath had at home to Cavan has put them on the back foot. <laughs> they go to Longford this weekend. They go to Longford this weekend. And that's a must <laughs> win. If, if they don't win that game, that, that's nearly their league campaign over. That I know that sounds dramatic, but it is like, you know, one point after two games, you know, and still have to play down and still have to play for Manic. <laughs> It, it's it's lights out. It's lights out, you know. So I, I think this weekend is a pivotal weekend. I'll tell you another thing too, and and you know yourself from playing yourself, like it's a, it's a, it's a it's a strange one this weekend because there's a two week break. So you could go into this weekend with two wins and the training for the next two weeks, as you know, will be buzzing. Everybody yeah. flying, the crack great, the morale great. You go in with two defeats or two games, no win. First week everybody's down, it takes a week to lift it, then you're building towards game three, and then all of a sudden game three becomes a must-win game, you know, and there's pressure, and that's the way the league is, that's the beauty of the league, you know, it's a great product that we have, you know. Yeah, if, we won, if we lost the first two league games, I'd be coming down from Dublin a lot fucking more of less next two weeks after that, I guarantee you that. Yeah. It, it all yeah. depends how the league was going, if they were chipping around nicely, uh, the, yeah. there's more sessions in Dublin um, for the Mayo crew like there used to be seven or eight of us up here ten years ago we'd say but yeah. uh, as you said it's it's the pressure's on if you lose the first two league games yeah. there is fucking major pressure uh, yeah. and obviously the third game